Assassin's Creed Valhalla can be quite a daunting game when you first start, and there is a hell of a lot of information to take on board. So after 400 hours in this game, I've put together 10 tips that I wish someone had told me before I started playing. Tip number one, Norway is just the beginning. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is an absolutely massive game, one of the biggest I've ever played, which first starts you off in the rather idyllic land of Norway. With story missions, side quests and places to explore, you can easily spend a good 10 to 15 hours enjoying Norway before you even start the main part of the game and move over to England. You may be wondering if you'll ever be able to get back to Norway, but of course never fear, you can travel back whenever you wish. So if you're keen to blast through the Norway story quest to get your main settlement in England, do it. This snowy mountainous land will still be waiting for you whenever you want to return. Take your settlement seriously. Building your settlement in England is an integral part of the game, and there are loads of different elements to growing your town of Ravensthorpe. One thing I wish I'd realised when I started was that it's definitely best practice to upgrade your buildings as soon as possible, and ideally start building your blacksmith, hidden ones bureau, and stable first. The blacksmith is obviously where you can upgrade your armour and weapons, the stable where you can purchase new mounts to ride, as well as learning valuable skills like being able to take your mount on water. The Hidden Ones Bureau is also very important as you'll learn the Leap of Faith skill, be able to collect codex pages, as well as opening up a huge list of important figures for you to assassinate. This part is incredibly important for the future of the game, but you'll hear no spoilers from me. The Hunter's Hut and Fishing Hut are also important for extra silver and special rewards, as well as the Cartographer allowing you to purchase maps for each region, showing you the locations of abilities, skills and more. And finally, something a lot of players likely miss, is that there is also a bell outside the longhouse which after ringing, gives you improvements in armour, assassination damage and a load of other perks for a short duration of time, so definitely very valuable for new players. Ringing this bell also forces you to enjoy a feast with your viking pals, which is a nice break from the usual violence of chopping off heads. The skill tree looks way more daunting than it actually is. When you first start Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you're given access to the skill tree which is a ginormous tree of abilities in three different sections, Raven, Bear and Wolf. Each animal is an aspect of different skills for Eivor, so Raven is stealth, Bear is combat and Wolf is archery, but it can be difficult to know where to begin, what direction to take and even which skills you might want to get to first. However, one thing to help alleviate your concern is that you can reset every single skill point, so if you want to try more of the stealth skills you can, if you prefer to max out Eivor's combat skills first, you can do that too. Eventually, you'll have so many points you'll have access to them all, but when starting, this is a good point to know without trying to decide which style of play best suits you. One good skill I will recommend is the Advanced Assassination skill, which allows you to take out larger targets with one simple shot. You'll find this in the Raven or Stealth section, just thank me later. Which weapons are strongest to use? There are currently 15 different weapon types in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and it's going to take you some time to work out which types work best for you. But whilst you're spending your time in England and Norway grinding for new gear, it's probably definitely worth knowing that at the moment, and probably for the foreseeable future, spears are by far the strongest weapon in Valhalla. If you've got limited time to play and are looking for weapons that are great against all enemy types, I'd suggest searching for some decent spears first. If you actually need a hand in finding some new weapons, you can check out all of my weapon guides in the link here, and I'll leave a link in my description as well. And by the way, once you unlock the heavy dual wield ability, which is hidden in the bear skill tree, you'll be able to wield two spears, which takes using them into a godlike level. Parrying is the key to winning every fight. The combat system, which initially I found to be a little difficult when starting out, takes one main trick of really learning, which is that parrying and stunning in this game is king. By parrying and landing heavy attacks, and shooting enemies' highlighted areas with arrows, you'll knock enemies' stun meter down, until eventually they'll drop into a state where you can release a devastating kill animation. Once you've spent a bit of time learning to be the parry king, most enemies are going to have a really tough time of dealing with you. Eventually, you'll learn a huge number of abilities for both your melee weapons and bows, which takes the combat from a simple hack and slash and gives it a whole new dimension. When starting out though, your abilities are going to be limited, so you should definitely work on parrying and stunning your enemies. Flighting is more useful than you think. 
In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you're introduced to a rather trivial little task called flighting, which is basically a mixture of slam poetry and freestyle rapping. You'll have to respond against your opponent flighter with the best rhyme possible, and honestly, unless you have the reading ability of a toddler, this is incredibly easy, so you may as well always bet big on this one to get yourself some easy cash. The reason I mention it though, is because flighting raises your charisma level, which can make life easier for you in the future. You'll have many instances where you're trying to gather information from NPCs, and dependent on your charisma level, you can either pay for this information, or choose the right words and get this information for free. So if you see a flighting opportunity, definitely spend the time spitting bars as it may help in the future. Slam! Poetry! Yelling! Angry! Raising my hands a lot! Raiding equals a better settlement. Raiding villages, towns, castles, and monasteries is a huge part of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and plays more importance than merely just taking over England. You'll gather raw material supplies, which in turn you can use to upgrade all the different parts of the settlement, including all of the more important buildings I mentioned in point one. So shortly after starting the game, I'd suggest exploring England, crack on with raiding some villages, and then start building your Ravensthorpe into the best trading town it can be. Upgrade your rations as soon as possible. By upgrading your rations, you guessed it, you'll be able to heal more, which is absolutely paramount if you're playing on harder difficulties, as you'll find just a few hits can kill you. In order to upgrade your rations, you'll need iron and leather, which you can literally find everywhere. However, there is a slight negative to doing it first. The same resources can be used to upgrade your weapons and gear, which whilst is important, personally, I think getting those rations upgraded takes precedence, at least to begin with. Merchants will also have plenty of iron and leather for you to buy for silver, and if you're struggling to afford all this, don't forget to sell off your trinkets as they literally have no value for you except to be sold. Know your enemies. There are a huge number of different enemy types in Valhalla, many more than the previous games in fact, and every single one of them has different strengths and weaknesses that you can take advantage of. However, this isn't always clear, so I suggest taking a peek in your codex. In here, you'll find listed all of your enemy types, as well as some information on taking them out. For example, you can break a spear enemy's block stance with one heavy attack, which when I learned this valuable bit of insight, made fighting them far easier than at the beginning. The flame keepers too, who can actually deal out tons of damage near and far, have explosive barrels on their back which when shot with an arrow will explode, damaging themselves and enemies around them. So when starting the game, I'd say take a peek at the codex for some really useful info, which is going to help you in all your future fights. And finally, your stamina is the most important thing to keep an eye on when fighting. Much like a Dark Souls game, your stamina will decrease when fighting and return when taking a break. If you run out of stamina whilst fighting, it's very likely that you could die as you have no dodging or parrying capabilities. The lighter you are, so dependent on how much armor and what sort of weapons you're using, the more stamina you'll have, so probably best not to try and take on enemies using too heavy shields. You can actually view your weight, which directly impacts your stamina, as well as all your other stats like evasion, health, melee resistance, and more all in the stats menu. It's definitely worth keeping an eye on, particularly in your first 50 hours of playing. So there you go, there is 10 things I wish I knew before starting Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There is still a lot more useful information to know in this game, so why not check out my other video of secrets and gameplay mechanics you may not know for even more tips to help you dominate England with. I will hopefully catch you legends in the next one.